handling epic tantrums and sibling rivalry. Did you know there are seven key factors that you need to understand and master in order to manifest anything in your life? Well, guess what? I'm going to teach it to you. I'm creating a free training that's happening at the end of April. So if you're interested, head on over to momisincontrol.com forward slash join. And the first key factor, I'm going to give you a little heads up right now, is getting super crystal clear on what it is that you want. Yes, I know this can be overwhelming. So guess what? When you join, head on over to momisincontrol.com forward slash join, fill out your name and your email. I'm going to gift you my alignment PDF. This is curriculum taken from my mastery program that I'm gifting you just for registering for this free training. And during the free training that will happen at the end of April, and yes, there will be a replay, I will walk you step by step through the process, what these seven key factors are, giving you resources and actionable practical steps that you can take today, well, not actually today, but on that day, to take back control of your time and your parenting. The secret here is once you understand how to manifest, you can transfer these skills to any area of your life. So if you're ready to finally stop just listening to the podcast, but start implementing and taking the next step, then head on over to mamasincontrol.com forward slash join. It's free. Okay, ladies, I'm back another day, another podcast. So this happened to me today, so I thought I would just podcast about it while it was happening. Um, Because I know that one, the old Heather, the old way of being would have never parented this way. And two, I know that this would most likely help someone out there. So I'm going to paint the picture for you. We are running late. It's the morning. The reason why we're running late is because I gave the boys permission to sleep in. And was that resistance? Was that sabotage? I don't know. But I feel like sometimes this go, 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 you know, mentality can be really overwhelming, not only for us as an adult, but our children as well. So naturally, organically, the boys were sleeping in. So I thought I'll sleep them. I'll I'll sleep them in. I'll let them sleep in. Right now, they're 14, 9, and 6. So 14-year-old, I mean, that's a given. He'll sleep in. The 9-year-old and the 6-year-old, I actually found it rather rare that they were sleeping in. So I thought, okay, I'll give you some extra sleep. I didn't have to work today. So all good. And they wake up slowly. And so I'm also solo parenting this week, and um, we have some contractors coming into our house, so we don't have a kitchen. Like, it just, there are things that feels out of sorts, but there was people coming. I knew the schedule all was well. And the contractor was supposed to be there at 8.30 in the morning, and I had to show him something. He didn't show up till 9.30, almost 10 o'clock. Um... Old Heather would have been annoyed because people weren't on time, which is fine, right? We plan, and then we have to be flexible with it. So I got the boys up. They woke up. They were eating breakfast. I said, okay, time to go, time to go. You know, hemming and hawing, you know, bitching and complaining a little bit. No big deal. So we get in the car, and I said, okay, boys, get in the car. The contractor just showed up. I'm going to show him what he needs to do, um, and we're going to talk for a little bit. You can stay outside or you can stay in the car. So I come back, get in the car, ready to leave the house, and the 14-year-old is bawling his eyes out, and the 9-year-old, you could tell, was upset as well. And the 6-year-old typically doesn't get involved in these arguments. But I knew exactly what happened, right? One child says, he did this to me. The other child says, no, he's lying to you. He did this to me. So here's my stance. One, I was not triggered by this situation. Old me would have been effing pissed. So if you go back and you hear me in the podcast talking about red, green, and yellow zones, 
A red zone is what the boys were in, right? They were losing their mind. A green zone is how you want to feel every day when you're calm, cool, and collected. And a yellow zone is when your stress response is just starting to kick up a notch right before the explosion happens. So old Heather would have been probably just because of the day, solo parenting, off schedule. I would have been in my yellow zone to begin with. And then this would have just directly put me in my red zone. But because I practice what I preach and the lifestyle that I live and the, you know, emotional intelligence that I practice and all of this beautiful stuff that I teach, um, I got in the car, I was in my green zone, I got in the car and I was not attached to their drama. I was observing it and I just want to put in like a, a little note here that I'm not quote unquote perfect all the time. Um, some days especially if I was near my period or something, I would have lost my shit. And when I say lose my shit, I don't mean scream and yell and punish and do all of that. I just would have went to my red zone and I probably would have bit my tongue and just, you know, got really, really quiet because I wouldn't want to explode on them. Um, But regardless of where you are at in your journey, please try your best not to beat yourself up. I don't want you to compare yourself and say, oh, must be nice. I wish I could be like that, but I can't. I can't. There's many resources out there. I have so many free resources on my website. There's a mindful discipline resource you can download. So just check that out at heatherchauvin.com. Um, and this is all about, and the energetic time management, like the workshops that I teach, um, those are available on my website as well under work with me. You can do the, you know, you can purchase them and start tonight, but you have to make an, like a commitment to solve this problem. Too often I hear parents complaining about their children, but not actually being open to solve the problem. So if you're not willing to solve a problem because you don't have the skills and you don't know where to look, um, you really have nothing to complain about. Because one, I'm telling you exactly where you can get this information right now. And the other thing is you have to get out of your own way and take radical responsibility for your big emotions. And I know that might not be something you want to hear, but it's one of those things that you do need to hear. Because uh, the reason why I do what I do is not for you. It's actually for your children. Because I want the next generation of children to feel successful emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. um, And you are their greatest teachers. So headed back to in the car, in the situation, I'm sitting there losing, they're losing their mind. And my 14-year-old always plays the victim, right? The nine-year-old, he reacts in anger. So he's a very anxious child and um, he he projects his anger. So if he's uncomfortable, he's going to punch you or he's going to use hurtful words. Now he's able to self-regulate a little bit, but he is human and he's not perfect. So, um, so that's typically his go-to. The other one will get, uh, the older one will get very quiet and, and cry and be very, um, not as aggressive. He will fight back, but not as aggressive. It's more like he's in a bad mood. He's all of a sudden going to have a really, really shitty day where the other one can just kind of like punch somebody in the face and then move on with his day. And then the little six-year-old, he just like, he just plays with his Legos and he's like, do, 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 life is good. So I sat there and I said, guess what, boys? So when we talk about punishment and consequence, I know, right? I'm observing the situation and I know our house is in chaos right now. The energy in the home is not complete. And their rooms are disoriented because we're kind of like still unpacking and getting situated from uh, the move that we had to do during the renovation. So I know the energy is off in the home. So some of the energy that I can quote unquote manager control is making sure that they're, you know, eating properly, eating consistently, making sure, trying to get them up before we're rushing out the door to create a little bit of space. But the energy in the environment is off a little bit. So I said, guess what? No, no screens this weekend, no media. Um, They do get a little bit of screen time and uh, we don't have regular television, but they do have access to Netflix. 
So that will be off until Sunday night. So they'll have three days with no screen, no Wi-Fi, no nothing. I have a, um, a wireless router in my house. It's a Google router. I can access the Wi-Fi from my phone. I have an app. So I will just turn the Wi-Fi off on all devices. So whether that's a TV or an iPad or a telephone so that no child has access to Wi-Fi. And sometimes when I have, you know, struggling with boundaries, I'll actually get my husband to shut my phone off with um, internet access as well so that I can't access anything and I'll just turn my Wi-Fi off. So here's the deal. I am my data off. This, some people might think this is restrictive. This is, um, you know, controlling. This is whatever. It's not punishment. I actually didn't raise my voice at all. I said, awesome. Well, when we come home, we're going to clean our rooms. We're going to, you know, make sure everything's done, whatever. They're both in their red zone. So I didn't really like push it too much, but mentally I'm making a note that when they come home, we're going to reorganize the energy. And They're not going to like it at first, and I'm okay with that because I'm here to be their teacher, to be their guide and their coach. I'm not here to be their best friend, and I'm not here to let them guilt trip me. So the thing with boundaries is I've already made a statement, so I have to take radical responsibility for my action. My action was that I declared that there will be no screen time or no Wi-Fi until Monday morning. I have to follow through with that declaration. If I don't follow through with that declaration, what I'm doing is I am literally screwing myself as a parent and giving my power away to my children. So even if you make, you know, you say a statement and you're like, why the heck did I just do that? You have to follow through with it. Um, That's my suggestion. Unless you say something really, really stupid, then you're just going to have to deal with that. So after I made that declaration, I'm like, great, after school, there's going to be some organization happening. I'm actually going to encourage them to go outside and to play with their friends. The only thing that I'm taking away is the screen time. But I'm not taking away friends. I'm not taking away um, anything that involves play or nature. I'm going to encourage that. Now, if I was writing this in a parenting book 20 years ago, it would be very different, right? They say, you can't play with your friends. Well, that's kind of counterintuitive to culture now where we encourage that. So I'm going to say, yeah, allow yourself. Go on your bike ride. Go do this. Be bored. Figure it out because you have no internet access, no TV, no screens. Um, so after that was done, I just let it go. They're still going back and forth. You know, the one is playing the victim. The other one is prosecute or persecuting and blaming the other one. And I just said, listen, this is a life lesson. Guess what? I just wanted to let you know that if somebody was punching me in the face, guess what I would do? I would physically remove myself from the car. So even if somebody else wrongfully hit you, you need to protect yourself. You're 14 years old, physically open the door and walk away. But what's happening here is you're not taking radical ownership for your anger. And then I looked at the nine-year-old and I said, and you, you need to learn that just because you're angry doesn't mean you get to punch somebody. So you're going to be learning your lesson too, and you don't get away with this. And so again, the kids go back and forth. They're trying to emotionally manipulate me and and give their shit, not take radical responsibility for their big emotions and hand it off to me or ping it on the other person. And so this is what happens in schoolyards. This is what happens when it's he said, she said. And so I just didn't carry any of it. All I did was awesome. I see you're both angry. This is your argument, not mine. I don't have to take any of this on. It doesn't have to ruin my day, nor do I need to feel guilty or at blame for anything. So just because one child's trying to blame me that I'm always on the side of the other child, I don't fucking care. This is your argument. I'm going to go for a walk and enjoy my life. So I dropped them off at school, and before that, this is a really important um, piece of the puzzle. I made a joke. I lightened the mood. I wanted them to know that I still love them. I still respect them. I didn't want to shame my children. I just wanted them to see, like, you know, hey, you had a disagreement. 
you there's a natural consequence to that we need to change things you need to take ownership for your emotions even if they can't see that now and I still love you. Let's move on. Let's have a good day. So we cracked some jokes. The energy shifted. I dropped them off at school and I was in my green zone and I said, I love you. I'll see you after school. And they said, I love you too, mom. And that is it. It is done. It's done. But when they return home, they're going to be in their green zone and they're going to say to me, can I go on the computer? Can I watch some TV? And I'm going to say, what happened this morning? And they'll be like, yeah, but da, da, da. And they might rise up to their red zone again. And I'm going to stick to my boundary all the way to Sunday. And I'm going to encourage them to help me clean up around the house. I'm going to encourage them to get outside. The point here is I'm following through with my boundary. And another thing that I do is I don't repeat myself. So If he says, but why, but why, but why? I'll say, I've already answered that question. You know the answer. And then I just shut up. And if they ask me that for three days, I just don't respond. And when they say, why aren't you listening to me? I'll say, I am listening to you, honey, but you're not asking me another question. You're repeating yourself. And then I just walk away and I put some earplugs in. I'll put my headphones in. The point is, realize that children are emotional manipulators and they really don't feel comfortable with their discomfort. Just like you don't feel comfortable maybe having uncomfortable conversations with other people, you are your child's leader. You are teaching them how to feel control, how to feel in control of their big emotions. So, how you show up in these situations truly matters. Okay, guys, I hope that was super helpful for you. If it was, please let me know. Send me a message on Instagram at mom is in control. Follow me over there. And yes, if you haven't already, check out the seven key factors webinar that I'm doing at mom is in control.com forward slash join. Big life journal. Have you heard of them? Are you secretly hoping your children do as you say and not as you do? Well, guess what? I've teamed up with Big Life Journal to help you give your children the tools and strategies that they need to live their big life. Their growth mindset journals empower children to face their challenges head on, think positive, and embrace mistakes. You can also check out their printables and activity cards. It doesn't matter if your child is a toddler or entering high school. Discovering how to live in a growth mindset is a lifelong skill we can all learn more about. To check them out, go to momisincontrol.com forward slash big life and let them know I sent you.